in Asheville, North Carolina. And I want to say thank you to Nick and Chris for being so supportive of the work I've been doing here this week. It's been really fun hanging out with them and um, uh, yeah, just having their support on this project. So I've been here measuring a bunch of their speakers for Tracebook. So over the next few weeks, um, they'll be uploading those. So you might want to check in at tracebook.org to see what's getting uploaded there if you're interested in seeing some DMB measurement data. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is input calibration because the input calibration procedure for Tracebook has changed a tiny bit since I made that first video um, a couple of years ago. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So I'll just show you how to do it real quick and then I'll talk about a, a little bit about why it's changed a little bit. Okay, so where this starts is really on the Tracebook upload page as many things do. So here's that upload page and when you head over there you select your audio interface and once you've selected your audio interface then you get this tip that says hey for you know input calibration use the number negative 16. What does that mean? Well let me go back to showing you my audio analyzer. So over here on my audio analyzer what I'm going to do is just put negative 16 into the signal generator. Uh, then I'll turn the signal generator on uh, word of warning, it's probably a good idea to disconnect all speakers before you do this. So this can be the first thing you do before you've connected to any amplifiers or speakers or anything like that. You don't want to accidentally send a, a sine wave to uh, any components that, that it might damage if it's too loud or whatever. So just be on the safe side and, and don't connect anything yet, just your audio interface. So I've got my loopback connect cable connected here. And so as soon as I hit generate here, in my audio analyzer, uh, I've got this indicator up here that shows me exactly how much signal I'm sending to that channel. Um, and you can see I should have selected sine tone here. So I've got a 1K uh, sine wave that I'm just sending around back to my loopback cable. I'm using the number negative 16 uh, on the output. I have everything else maxed out on my audio interface. So I have everything you know, turned all the way up to unity basically not adding anything but I'm I'm trying to remove any unnecessary additions or subtractions to the level that's coming out of this audio interface um, and so the target I have here is negative 12 and you can see I got really close I'm hitting negative 11.9 and that's as close as I could get on this interface so that's the reference branch and now I'm going to do the exact same thing for my measurement branch, my measurement input, but this time I'm going to generate the sine wave, sine tone with this microphone calibrator. So I just connect my microphone to the calibrator and now you can see I'll do the same thing. So I'll adjust the input gain on my audio interface until I hit negative 12. And that's it. So we're just trying to create a unity relationship here and the only minor change to the input calibration procedure now is that instead of setting this at negative 12, we now set it to the maximum output of the audio interface. So when you look at the specification sheet for this Motu M4 audio interface, it says that the maximum output line level 16 dBU. And so if you were to type that in, let's just show that over here again. So imagine that you're, maybe your audio interface is not in here yet. So you would say add new and then type in whatever your audio interface is. And then you would say, hey, my maximum output is 16 dBU. And so then I get the same information here. Use negative 16. So we're just creating an offset here. That way, uh, if I do my measurement here of some DMB speaker and then you do your measurement of some DMB speaker, but you have a different audio interface, we should still get the same level, the same magnitude data all the way through using this input calibration procedure. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, this video is a little bit long and making it seem like it's complicated, but it's actually quite simple. We're just trying to create this unity relationship here.